Hello everyone, welcome to Chemazon Complete Chemistry. So in our previous video we had seen the basic structure of an atom and its subatomic particles that is the electron, proton and neutron. We also saw their charges and we also learnt what do we mean by atomic number and atomic mass number. So have you ever thought of what would be a home of an electron or in an atom around the nucleus what would be the probability of finding an electron or where would you find an electron? So the correct answer is atomic orbitals. What are atomic orbitals? Atomic orbitals are the region around the nucleus in the three dimensional space where you would find or you would have the maximum probability of finding an electron. Why I am using the word probability? Because we cannot see the atom and we are not exactly how sure uh, that the electron will be present uh, around the nucleus. So, we make use of quantum mechanics and the quantum chemistry concepts to understand uh, the atomic orbital and the position or probability of an electron into that orbital. So, let us now understand the different types of atomic orbitals. That is the S orbital, you can see it is a very fundamental orbital which is spherical in shape and the entire region of S orbital will have one phase. So the next set of orbitals is the P orbitals. We have three P orbitals that is Px, Py and Pz. The basic shape of the P orbital is the dumbbell shape as you can see here. There are three of them Px which is oriented along x direction, Py which is oriented along y direction and Pz which is oriented along z direction. So a very important point to be noted is that the both the two lobes of P orbitals are of different phase that is one is let's say positive phase then the other one will be negative or the other way around if one is negative another will be positive so both the lobes of p orbital are of opposite phase so the next set of orbitals is the d orbital so there are total of 5 d orbitals that is d y z d x y d x z d z square and d x square minus y square so the first three d orbitals are the d orbitals in which the lobes of the d orbitals are oriented in between the axes whereas the last two orbitals that you can see that is d x square minus y square and d z square are the two d orbitals which are oriented along the axis so let us see the shapes of the d orbitals so here you can see this is the dyz orbital which is oriented in between y and the z or z axis the dxy which is oriented in between x and y axis dxz which is oriented in between dx x axis and the z axis whereas this is the dz square orbital which is oriented along the z axis and this is uh, the x square minus y square which is oriented along x y direction so in this way the orbitals d x y d y z and d x z are the three orbitals which are oriented in between the axis whereas d z square and d x square minus y square are the two orbitals which are oriented along the axis the next set of orbitals is the f orbitals and there are a total of seven f orbitals that is f y d x square minus y square f z x square minus y square f y z square f z cube f x z square f x y z and f x x square minus 3 y square you can see all the 7 f orbitals have different shapes so how do we get the names of these uh, whether it is a d orbital we have d x square minus y square dz square dxy yz or xz or all these f orbitals how do you get the names of these orbitals so we get the names of these orbitals from orbital symmetry and uh, the group theory the concept of group theory orbital theory and a little bit of quantum mechanics involved in it and then we get the names of these orbitals so now the question is why these orbitals are let's say an s orbital is spherical or a p orbital is dumbbell shape or a d orbital is double dumbbell or an f orbital has different shapes why it is the spherical or dumbbell shape or why it cannot be of any other shape like cone shape or a cubicle or any other shape so the 
correct answer comes from the quantum mechanics so this equation which you can see is nothing but a Schrodinger wave equation for a very simple hydrogen atom so hydrogen atom is a two body problem uh, as it comprises of the nucleus and the single electron which revolves around the nucleus so this is a basic Schrodinger wave equation for a hydrogen atom you need not be afraid or sca scared by looking at this big equation we will be dealing this in much detail in the quantum chemistry so this is the Schrodinger wave equation so what we do is we first uh, use the mathematical concepts and we try to solve this uh, hydrogen atom uh, the Schrodinger wave equation of this hydrogen atom and uh, after solving we get something called as a plot of radial distribution function uh, and we get these plots or these curves for all the different orbitals like 1s, 2p, 2s, 3d, 3p and 3s so what would do we interpret from this graphs or curves so here you can see the same plots are given again that is for 1s this is the radial distribution plot and from this we interpret that an s orbital will be spherical in shape similarly a 2s orbital will look something like this from this plot and then there is this 3s so 1s 2s 3s these are the radial distribution plots that we get by by solving the Schrodinger wave equation for hydrogen atom and this is how uh, we get the shapes of the orbitals and let's say if we apply this uh, hydrogen wave equation for all the different types of orbitals and accordingly you can see all these contour plots what do you mean by contour plot? contour plot is a three-dimensional plot generally on paper we plot a two-dimensional plot that is x-axis and y-axis or y or z or x or z but when we uh, take all the three dimensions together that is x, y and z axis and when we plot anything on a three-dimensional axis then that plot is called as a contour plot and here you can see based on the different uh, quantum numbers we have plotted all these different shapes of orbitals you can get by solving this hydrogen Schrodinger wave equation so in this way we come to know that uh, how beautifully we can make use of mathematics uh, in quantum mechanics and we come to know the different shapes of the orbitals and thank you so much